Alrighty, here we go. A little skin tone. And we're going to darken some of the dark areas. And I have a transparent darker tone in there. And so I'm just going to start. Now that's drawn in the eyebrows and stuff. So I'm just going to start taking the reference picture with the transparent paint and trying to find my way around some of the uh, lighter areas, making them darker and uh, just taking my time, kind of just looking at the reference, making sure I don't go too far. Um, I want to make sure my color is the right color. So over on this side, we'll just look at that. Whoops, there we go. I'm just going to start lightly spraying over what I already established right in here. Now if it's too brown, which it looks like it might be, I'm going to be changing that right away. Um, yeah. I think I'll leave it for a little bit, but go all along the base here. And uh, yeah, definitely going to put some more sepia in this color. Okay, so give me a second here. And I want to kill the orange bit, so with the little opposite blue in there, just one drop. I was using a paintbrush to do a little stirring into my solo cup which is right here and sometimes you don't put enough color in which means the amount of the opposite you're trying to put in because you're trying to be careful as opposed to uh, hey I think this is a little better and let's let's just work it freehand for a minute we'll go up in here Keeping a close eye on the reference. Stop and look at it. And from what I see in the picture, I'm going to go even darker with the, with the uh, sepia. It's just a little too orangey brown for me right now. So... Um, Again, the blue and the sepia will make me more of what I'm looking for. Started off a little too light as far as uh, too brown. If I spray this very light, I'll get a more dirtier, kind of brownish color, but just more grayed out very dark when you're spraying it on the side lines very dark uh, I'll give you an example here we'll take this strip all right so I mean obviously you can get like really really dark but you can also treat it very light so gradations I'm going to just be careful and I know over here on this side I have oh, a little tinting to do in here. The lighting is extreme. In some areas it's real dark. You can see it kind of going there now a little bit. All right. Now, Obviously, this is the lighter side, so we will carefully manage that. So, looking at the reference, the color I already have down here, I'm going to whisper in just a little bit of tone on top of his bridge of his nose, just a little bit, just to kind of tie it together. And then I have to... Um, Take a shield here and very carefully whisper up a little bit of, I'm not trying to paint like a solid area. I'm trying to 
just bring it together. There's going to be some little bit of tinting of red in there, a red tone. Uh, okay, so let's leave that as we go along the side of the nose. A little more air pressure, a more free handing. This is very dark in here. It's not um, the brown that you see there. It's more. Now I'm going to start backing away. So I'm further away with the airbrush. Kind of overall tinting this, knocking that color. There's a highlight there, so I'm going to kind of work around that. Very carefully paying attention to what's going on over here. Um, and now just a far away mist over that highlighted area. All the way around. Now the whole side of the, the face is getting to be in the darker, darker area. Okay. Knock that highlight back by spraying over it a little. And what else can we do here? Come up in here. Kind of have some of the hairs from his, they're like clusters, the eyebrows. I do have a little pattern that I'm going to try to use here. Um, try to get some, something pleasing to the eye that would represent some eye, eyebrows. Got to be careful though direction of which way they're going. I'm looking at it and it is more uh, this way. That would work if I'm careful. Let me just put a couple in. Just a whisper. Okay. There we go. We got a couple going on right there. I'll zoom in. But just like you treat hair, it's very, um, there's a lot of areas that are not individual hairs. So you go back in and you kind of make a cluster of color that will just play off of them without killing all of them, you know, making them all go away and uh, leaving some skin tone underneath. back in there and you know get the, the hairs to this is tape by the way get the hairs to be more uh, like the photograph I have to just keep working it all right this side's a little trickier this side I'll put a little color right here right there and then I'll stop and look at it and like I was saying before this is just blue tape I just walked it along and then I put another piece and I kept the curve of the brim of the, the curve of the hat. So I'm going back to this and I've got too much air. So we got to be careful here. Hope you can see it. Just a little freehand. Okay. I'm kind of bouncing my finger bouncing the paint onto the shield. creating the darkness that is right in there. Uh, this is going to be 
a little, there's a frisket still on the eye. So I'm going to spray on the eye and walk it very slowly just down. Some things are so subtle, like it's not a just big dark area there. It's just a little dark by the, by where the eye and the eye, the eyeball and the skin are meeting. Um, same thing over there, but let's go back, let's go over here now, because we got to kind of bring the, the same palette, you know, the same color from the same palette over, but not as dark a value. So I'm just going to go real easy. Now the lighting is going to pop more and more as we play with this, uh, this color. Pump stroke down in here. Just working it. Uh, what else we want to do? We want to come off here and slowly add a little tone to that very carefully. So I keep that over here. I'm going to try to put in a little bit of this tone, but it might look a little too grayish. Yeah, I really, I've got to get back into... Um, you can either erase that down and get back to the original flesh and deepen it because some of the blue oversprayed onto there, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. When you're doing the videos, you want to keep them moving. Mistakes and all. Not that that's really a mistake. Well, that's a mistake from before. I probably should have fixed it. The last video was put up only about two hours ago, I think. So you can check that out. It's the texturing of the hat. Freehand here. Just these are some of the hairs in here that I'll put a little whisper of color on. Knock them back in. I'm looking. I keep looking at the picture and making sure I go slow. Okay, so right in around here, I'm going to get that rounder part. I have a little bit more color starting right. Up in there just a little like that and then it can erase out and uh, individuals are up here so you have let's see onto the oops we got a little speckle there because I do have but that's in the pure white area so that's no big deal okay so we want to make a little darker hair, a shadow, I guess you might say. That's going to be the individual hairs that are coming off up in here by my thumb. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, the, the ones that are coming down are more of a reddish tone, so I'll leave that. Um, I could probably do something right here. Right here. Now, I want to go back to the eraser. Dirty eraser, it will not move any, remove any paint. <laughs> None. So, I'm just going to sweep through here. That's the sweetness of the, uh, the transparent. You paint on, paint off, you know, just like the airbrush. Uh, just add and subtract and get what you're looking for. There's a little blue down on there. Now that's gone. I think we have two dots here that we have to get rid of. They're, they're gone right away. can lighten that by just going over it because that's really the value right there. All right. So I don't want to get too, too of the, too dirty in there with the the darker color. These are this is the more redder, peachier colors. But there there is a stronger shadow right here. I'm going to come off and just deepen that a little bit and go along the eyebrow right there. So now he's starting to at least have some eyebrows. I know I know it's going on to the tape, so it doesn't it looks like a mess. But um, individual hairs. Let's find a couple of individual hairs here. I got to be careful because 
This is a Drew Blair stencil. I'm trying to find something that I could use possibly without getting, okay, so they go up to a point that way. And I'm gonna just kind of borrow one or two, right? It's hard to see through them. So I don't know where I'm laying it down. All right, let me make a mark on here, a dark mark that I can, yeah, there, I can see through that. All right, so let's get something going. Um, I need to do this a little differently. All right, take a piece of paper, take an X-Acto knife. I, I need a little curve uh, hair that's gonna go this way. So I'm, gonna, I'm on the side cutting this. My whole desk is a cutting uh, You know, it's a cutting mat. Okay, so now I have a couple of slices in the paper right there. I didn't cut deep enough on the one, so let me just do one over here. Nice curve. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that and open it a little bit. It's gotta be a little tricky, because you have to kind of hold, hold it open a little bit. It's nice when you have your student with you and you could literally get him to help you. All right, so there's an opening. Let's try one. Careful not to go past that bottom. There it is. One hair going right up. It's tedious, but if you work it, if you if you take this and just, now this one could kind of flare off. So I'll use the, the other one that I cut and I will put it right there. It's, I mean, they're not falling exactly. I know you guys can't see around my hands, but once I get it split, once I split the paper and get it to where I want it, I can kind of show you it better. There we go. All right, hopefully, well, you'll see the results. if you, you could see the split right there, but I'm just going to spray on part of it. Okay, there's another hair there, and it's kind of individuals, okay? It's going to take a while to do all of them, but I'm giving you at least a feel for what I'm going to do. This is dark right in here. Pretty dark. Don't be afraid to uh, look at your values. They're more important than actually the color at first. You know, you've got to get your values right. Um, it's just the way it is. There, if, if you are mixing a color and you spend so much time mix, mixing your color and then you find out you're so far off of your value, <laughs> you might as well hang in there for a while and try to, you know, get the... Uh, Get the value right and then try to put the color in the huge shift it around a little bit by adding colors all right inside the ear different things going on and what else we the black here i have the frisket off so just for it's pretty dark the color so i'm going to just use my other new shield today that I got. Actually, today's Sunday, so I got it yesterday. Yeah, so I think it's right around there, the black edge. And I can get away with this for now. Maybe it will work all together, let's see. Yeah, pops everything right out. Okay, so let's find another spot over here. Um, we have a little edge that I need to kind of knock back over there. This is going to be some individual hairs. I'm going to turn the air pressure up a little and I'm going to try to fire in a couple of strokes freehand where his hair is shooting off into the darkness as you can see in the photo. And it's pretty dark so I have to kind of just be brave and add a little bit more right here. 
where it's coming off the hat, but go slow. Less is more, right? Okay, and here, let me try a freehand one. There we go. That always works. Here's a cluster where you go between the two. Because they're all, they're individual hairs, but they're, they're seen as a group. That's just the way hair is, you know. Look for highlights, look for all the things that go with it. Okay, so the tape obviously is making it look silly, but I know that that's not going to stay there and that the eyebrows will look like they go underneath, underneath the uh, brim of the hat where, where they belong. Got to be careful here. I got some Windex I'm trying to show you. That makes more sense. Now he's starting to look pretty good uh, as far as having some eyebrows. Before it was like, uh, just starting to look nuts. All right. So on the right side, his left side of his face, right in here, there's a nice little dark... I already have it there, but I'm going to kind of go for it again. Now, it's soft, so I have to kind of freehand it. It's just the outer edge of the bouncing light that comes back around on his face. There's going to be a little tiny... Uh, this might not be the color I want to use for it some texture but there is some dark ones down here so I guess I'm going to do a few uh, but I got to go back and forth how far down does this come now this shadow comes down further far away though so I'm going to first of all I'm going to take the shield and I'm going to go right off of this little guy right here. Get a little more coverage. Oh, I have my air up still high from doing the freehand. Tip dry. And get back into this. I think it's right around. Actually, I'm going the wrong way. Glad I looked at that. It's on this side. You gotta, you gotta really look at your reference photo. Spray on the shield and let a little bit go off and you get that. Okay. Um, of course, in here, this is frisket right now, but on the frisket, there's going to be, I could just put it on there just so you could see. There's going to be nice shading right there. Not quite as sloppy as that, but that's film. See, I can wipe that off. Just pay attention to the direction of the hairs. Higher air pressure here. I got a few wisps. That are working their way over in this area. 